Hello everybody, welcome to this instruction video. In this video I'd like to show you part 11 of the Elements Crochet Along. Elements has been designed by Sandra from Hooks and Yarn and on her website you can find the original pattern for this crochet along. For part 11 what we're going to be doing is going to be making squares, more squares, the same as in part 10. So we're going to be making 24 of these and then we're going to be joining them. I'm not so much going to show you everything step by step, as I'm rather I'm going to show you the methods that's involved um, with making the squares and doing the join. The yarn that I'm using, as always, is Schepje's Stonewashed Yarn, so I've been using that for the entire Elements Cal. And to do the crochet parts you need a 4mm hook. And actually for this part, very important, is you also need needles. Um, Sandra joins the squares with a needle, so I've got a set of um, needles that I'll be using to join the squares. So I'll just take you step by step through the elements that make up this part of elements, that's no pun intended. I want to thank you for watching and I hope it's a useful video for you. So the first thing we need to do for part 11 is make squares. A lot of these little squares. You're going to need 24 in total. You've already made 8 from last last week from part 10. So for this week, part 11, you need to make 16 more. I have all my squares the same. So I've got 24 identical squares. So it's in a lot of squares. You can make them all the same. You can make them different colors, different um, flows from, from a solid to a to a gradient, to another solid, um, just what you want. The um, designer gives options in her pattern for how you could divide these colors. I've all got mine the same, 24 of them. So first make 24 squares. The pattern is exactly the same as the first eight that you've made. So I'd like to refer you back to the videos for parts one and part 10 on how to make these squares. When you've got 24 of them, we're ready to start joining. When you have all your squares, we're going to join them. We're going to join them into strips of, we're going to do four strips. We're going to join five squares and we're going to join seven squares. So we're going to have two strips of five squares and two strips of seven squares. Just to give you an idea what that looks like, I've already done one. And you see here this has five squares. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So you see I've got this long strip here. And we're going to be joining these squares on one edge to make this long strip. So I've got five here. I've got another strip with um, seven squares. We've got two with five and two with seven squares. So these will go on to shorter sides and then the longer ones will also join to this one here. So this will be the center square. We've got five and then the seven one will also pass here and will join that one there. That will be the corner. But to join, the first thing we need to do is we're going to be joining these two squares. I'm just going to sh quickly show you how the designer does it. It's with a yarn and, um, and a needle. However, if you prefer to join your squares with a hook, um, for example with slip stitches or with single crochet stitches, that's all up to you. The designer has given you freedom to join the squares the way you want. So if you do not like um, joining squares with um, slip stitches or um, with a needle, do single crochets, do whatever works for you. So I'm just going to zoom in and show you how we're going to join these squares. So to join these squares the way Sandra has, I've got a needle and I've got yarn on my needle. I'm going to use a contrasting color to join these squares. If you want to use um, the same color, you can also do that. Of course, all options are open to you. What we're going to be doing is we're simply going to be threading through adjacent stitches. So just take a look at your work. If you look here to the corner, you see you've got this single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and there's that first single. Remember, this was a, a change in the pattern, so just a note, you should have 29 stitches here, because this was a change in the pattern that we um, also did that first single crochet in that first stitch. You should have 29 stitches. If you don't have 29, if you've only got 28, you're going to have to fudge a little bit later on. But as such, if you've got 29, that's the first stitch there. If you go to your 
adjacent square you look for the same stitch you see there's single crochet here's the chain one it's the chain one and single crochet so we're going to work through the same stitch on either side so I'm going to go through the single crochet on this side so I'm going to leave the chain one unworked the chain one you're going to leave unworked always so, uh, Sandra has chosen to leave that chain one undone single crochet on the one side and then on the other side so you can just pull through here that's just as easy and then on the other side also I'm going to go through the entire stitch so not just one loop through the entire stitch so both loops and then especially in the beginning and you've got still got a lot of uh, yarn you pull that through I choose not to put a knot in my yarn here. I'm just going to leave it like this and, when, and later on I'll work away this yarn tail. Then come from the other side in the next stitch on this side and the next stitch on the other side. And these two stitches are again corresponding stitches. See they're on the same level and then pull through all of that. Go to the next stitch and the next one is this one here. Through all four loops, so two on this side, two on that side. And I'm just a bit too low. There we go. And I'm going to pull through. And then come from the other side and let me just check it's not that stitch it's this stitch here and pull through and this way I'm going to join these squares together so, and by using this method you can actually you, you, it is that you can if you look very closely you'll see there's there's one of the joining lines and there's a joining thread and here's one but if you're using even the same color yarn you won't even see this join at all so continue like this so going back and forth so from what's here from the bottom to the top and then top to the bottom so threading through all those stitches until you get to this side and then the chain one here, you're going to leave that undone. So you're going to stop at that last stitch. I'm going to sew this entire edge together. When you've done that for one join, you're going to do exactly the same here on the next, where you're going to put a new square and join that. And when you've done that, again, add a new square like that until you've done five squares. So that would mean four joints. Then you've got one strip and then of course you need to make three more strips but when you've got your first strip I'll just show you how to join that strip to the big center blanket. So first continue and make all these joints. This is my first strip. I've got five squares here and this is the large center square. Now we're going to be joining this strip of five to this strip um, center square. Now a thing to note the five square goes from corner to corner so now this square starts there I'm going to join it all the way up and the fifth square will finish on that corner there. I'm going to do this on one side and do the same on the other side. Then the strip with seven squares is going to come on this edge here. So where the seven will be on the first one and the last one. So you can see that's why you've got two more, so that corner there. Now a few tips for joining this strip to the big square. What I've done is the big square has 144 stitches. Now I've got 145 on the long side there. So I'm just going to have to fudge one stitch, but don't worry, that's not a crisis. What I've done 
is um, just to, to help me um, with the joining process is I've marked every 20 stitches on the strip and on my square and in this process the joins actually they do not count as a stitch so it's um, it's 20 stitches and then 20 stitches so the join Sandra leaves the join um, not she, she doesn't explicitly hook up the join as a stitch to the big square so it's the stitches just before the join that are joined and then you skip that seam and then you go to the first stitch and then you continue joining so that's how Sandra's done it and if you've um, but just to kind of um, make sure that things keep lining up I've counted stitches so I've got 20 stitches then I've put a stitch marker 20 more stitches and I've put a stitch marker 20 more and a stitch marker all the way to the other side then you've got four left on the end you see here's the last stitch marker then I've got four stitches to the chain one space that chain one space does not count so only the stitches and then on this side I've done the same so 20 stitches 20 stitches 20 stitches until here and then I've got five stitches left here on the end so this last one I'm just going to fudge because I'll have four stitches on one side and five on the other and then um, I'll just work two stitches in one here I'm not sure if I actually made a mistake somewhere but possibly so I've just got one stitch more but if you've got to stitch more do not stress it's not, it's not a disaster you can fix all, all of this you can fix everything with crochet so what we're going to do is now exactly the same thing as we've done with these um, joints we're also going to join here and these points they're going to be markers for me because I know that these two stitches should be joined together and these two stitches they should be joined together so it can just going to help me especially around these joints if you accidentally skip one stitch too many that you that you'll get here and then your work will be like that or like that and then you know oh wait I've got a stitch I missed a stitch somewhere and then you can just correct for that here so so this is to help you take the time to count your stitches and just put those markers and then and then just all the way around um, you see here those two need to go together and those two need to go together and these two here and those two and then those last two dark blue markers I've actually put them in the same color so that you can really see where they go but for the joining part we're going to do exactly the same let me just zoom in for you and then we'll just start this join here so this join is exactly the same again yarn on my needle look at your corner you see single crochet that's the chain one loop and that's a single crochet so I'm going to go through that single there remember the single on this side goes with the straight edge here and that chain one you just leave that chain one don't worry about that so through this side and on the other side just if it does help just turn your work just quickly rotate your work because you see there's single chain one single and that single is the one you need there and pull through and come from the other side go to the next stitch and here also the next stitch and pull that together next stitch and the next and pull that together and you're going to continue like this until you're to the other side and you're going to um, omit the join you're not explicitly going to catch the join if you prefer to you're, you're welcome to do that I'm just going to assume for a moment I'm here because when you get to this point let's say I'm just going to work there and here then your next stitch, so I'm just going to pull this out, that's just as easy because it's just for demonstration purposes so I've just done that stitch and then the next stitch I know this one I've marked and that one I've marked, so those two I need to, they need to, to line up if they do not line up, say for example you've worked this one there 
So you've got one stitch left here, but nothing there. And you can work those two together. So this one can then take with the stitch that you've already worked. And that way, correct for that one stitch. And then these next two your, that, that you've marked, okay, right, now those line up again. So that way you can always correct if you notice, okay, I've got one stitch too many on one side and too few on the other. Work two stitches on one side and one stitch on the other, and that way you can correct. If we're just going to go to the join, let me just again pull that out. If we're at the join, just take a moment to really look where that join is. You see, there's the last stitch I worked. That's the chain one, and then this is that single crochet, which will be joined to a stitch on this side. Don't know exactly which one, but let's just assume it's that one for the moment. And then you go to the next stitch. So it's the next stitch here, and again, also here need to check. Okay, there's the last stitch work. That's that one, and then this is the chain one. And then that is the first single crochet. You're going to go through there. And that way, pulling this joint closed. I've left this yarn tail here for the moment. You can work now that you've got this joint tight, it's a good moment to also work that join in there. You see that, that yarn thread. I can now push that in through the hole and make this join neat. So I've purposefully left this yarn tail till I've got this join completed. And then again when you've got the join go to the next stitch and just thread this all in one stitch at a time. And just continue weaving back and forth. When you've gone this, this edge with the five, do the other side with the five, and then do the two sides with the seven, and then you're done. To give you an idea of what it looks like when you've got these squares connected, you see here I've got the strip of five already done, the one with seven still needs to come here. So I've got the large square, small square, small square, small square. You can see how this just makes your fabric bigger, and just, it's a beautiful effect. And I really like that all my squares are the same. I, I like symmetry, and I like pattern repetition. So this this really really works well for me. I just cannot get this in all in front of the camera. It's just impossible. But I've now shown you the elements that you need to um, to do this. One thing you'll notice if you look closely is that I've actually joined my stitches and uh, my squares with a slip stitch join. That's just a, that's my favorite join. It's also called a zipper join sometimes and this is my favorite join. So I've chosen to do my squares with a separate join or a flat join or a slip stitch join. I've also got a video on that how to do that. That's part of the nuts about squares cal where I also use this um, this join. So if you want to see how to do that just just look at the join for the nuts about squares crochet along. But um, Sandra doesn't use this join. She uses the join with a needle and um, and and um, sewing the squares together. And that's also a very good way of joining squares. So whichever way you prefer, join all your squares. And this is quite a lot of work. And when you're finished, you're ready for the last part of crochet along, part 12. And I hope to see you 